I want to make sure that the pin can fit easily with the bracket if both parts are manufactured. So I'll add a circular cutout to the tab on the bracket that's wide enough for the pin. For this, I'll use an extruded cut feature, which is similar to a boss extrude, except that it will remove material instead of add it. The extruded cut will also be a sketch-based feature, so I'll make the sketch first and then create the 3D geometry later. Up until this point, I've started a sketch from either the command manager or by clicking a plane or model face, but did you know that you can start some features before having a sketch in place? For example, I'll select the extruded cut feature on the features tab of the command manager, and SolidWorks prompts me to either begin a new sketch on a plane, planar face, or edge, or to choose an existing sketch. Since there's no sketch to cut from yet, I'll select the tab on the bracket's front face to start a new one, and SolidWorks changes the view orientation to look normal to the sketch plane. Again, notice the sketch icons appear, and I'm now editing Sketch 3, all indicators that I'm in Edit Sketch mode. The profile I have in mind will be for a simple circular cut, so I'll press the S key on my keyboard and launch the Circle tool from the Shortcut toolbar. I want to ensure that the circle is always centered about this arc here, and there are a couple of ways to do that which capture my design intent. First, I'll click anywhere on the tab to start the circle then again to place the radius. I won't worry too much about its position since I'll add relations in a moment. I'll press Escape to return to the selection arrow, and now all I have to do is select the circle, and while holding down the control key, select the arc. This brings up a pop-up menu that shows the available relation options that are possible with these two items selected. I can make them either co-radial, tangent, or concentric. I want to use concentric in this case, and when I select it, the circle snaps into position. While this method certainly works, I want to show another way of sketching that adds the relation automatically, which I prefer since it can save a bit of time. I'll delete this circle and press the S key once more to relaunch the circle tool. This time, I'll hover over the arc for a moment to wake up both its midpoint and center point, which are usually non-visible. Next, from the midpoint of the arc, I'll follow the inference line down to snap on the arc center point. Click to start the circle, and pull away to place it. Notice this time, instead of a concentric relation between the circle and the arc, SolidWorks generated a coincident relation between their center points. I'll press the escape key to get to the selection arrow, and when I move the circle to check its degrees of freedom, its center is fixed and the circle only changes in size meaning I need to specify the diameter with a dimension. I'll launch the dimension tool from the shortcut toolbar, click on the circle, and place the diameter dimension in the graphics area. I'll type in 20 millimeters, and press enter on the keyboard to accept the value and close the dialog box. Now that the sketch is fully defined, I can continue on with making the extruded cut. Since I began this sketch by launching the extruded cut feature, instead of switching to the features tab to select the tool, all I have to do is simply exit the sketch, and SolidWorks automatically brings up the Cut Extrude property manager. Like I mentioned at the start of the lesson, the Cut Extrude is very similar to the Boss Extrude, except that a cut is an extrusion that removes material instead of adding it. Much like a Boss Extrude, I also have options in the property manager to choose a direction and end condition for the cut. When working with cuts, a common end condition I find useful is Through All. This option ensures that the cut will always go through the entire part, even if the part width changes to, say, 200 millimeters. SolidWorks knows to extend this cut up through the end of the part, regardless of the size. If I were to use a blind end condition and later increase the depth of the tab's extrusion, SolidWorks wouldn't know to update the cut. So in this case, it's a good idea to use the through all end condition to ensure that it always cuts through the entire geometry. With the cut matching my design intent, I'll click the green check, and the feature is added.